Good morning dear students. Here is the second part of the seven ages written by William Shakespeare. Last time we saw that Shakespeare compares the world to a stage. He says the world is a stage. And we guys in this world are actors and actresses. And we all have our parts to play, different roles to play. In fact, everyone has a number of roles to play. And then he goes on to say that we have seven roles to play. There are seven stages of a man's life, which is a generalization, may not be applicable to a modern man. <clears throat> and then he began by saying that the first stage is that of an infant, a baby, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, crying and vomiting in the nurse's arms. Then he says that the second stage is that of a schoolboy, a whining schoolboy, a crying schoolboy, a, a schoolboy who screams on his way to school because he is reluctant to go to school. He creeps to school like a like a snail, most reluctantly, most unwillingly. Then the third stage, according to Shakespeare, is that of a lover. And as I have already told you, it is all a generalization. It's not necessary that everybody will fall in love. So then the third stage is um, that of a lover. Sighing like furnace means he has the fire of love. He burns with passion for his beloved. He sighs like a furnace. He has the same fire. As a furnace is aflame, he is aflame with the fire of love and he sighs deeply and then he sings, he sings a sad song because he's missing his beloved and the song also praises his mistress's eyebrows which is usual in the love songs the lovers often can be seen praising the physical beauty of their girlfriends and then the fourth stage is that of a soldier and that's where we have to begin in part two then a soldier so let me write the lines and then i'll explain to you what they mean. Shakespeare says, Then a soldier full of strange arts and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. Then a soldier full of strange arts. And bearded like the part. Jealous in honor. Sudden and quick in quarrel. Seeking the bubble reputation. even in the cannon's mouth. So the fourth stage is that of a soldier. Shakespeare says that in the fourth stage of life a man becomes a soldier, which is not true of everyone, for sure, but it is just a generalization. We all may not become soldiers, yet we have we have duties towards our nation. Soldiers are fulfilling their duty on the front and we have to be fulfilling our duties inside the country. So it is rather a generalization than a fact. So the fourth stage is that of a soldier full of strange arts and he has he takes strange arts that I will do this, I will do that, I will kill him, I'll, I'll, I'll destroy this country, I'll destroy that, I'll destroy my enemies all the while <laughs> because he's so Excited, so fervent, he's so passionate, a fiery man. So he says, uh, he say, he takes strange arts. I'll do this, I'll do that. He's all excited. He's not much mature. He's not that discreet, that sagacious, that wise. And bearded like the pard, his beard is like that that of the leopards. Pard he refers to leopard. His beard is like 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 the leopards. Well, the comparison is not just about is not just about the beard. It is deeper than the beard. Let's simply let's take it to simply mean that the soldier is as brave as a leopard, as powerful as a leopard, as boisterous as a leopard, as untamable, uncontrollable as a leopard, 
as aggressive as a leopard. That's what it means. And then jealous in honor. The soldier soldier is jealous in honor. See, it does not say jealous of or jealous of. It says jealous in. You know the meaning of jealous of. I'm jealous of you because you're successful like that. But jealous in honor. Jealous in honor. It means that, you know, he, he wants to keep his honor. He does not want to lose his honor. He loves his honor so much that he does not want to lose it no matter what price he has to pay for it. He is jealous in honor. He does not want to lose his honor. He may give everything up for it. He may give his life for it. But he is not going to give up his honor. Jealous in honor. Sudden and quick in quarrel. As I just told you, he is aggressive. He is belligerent. He is pugnacious. He is quarrelsome because he is excited. The youthful excitement, you know. And especially he is a soldier. A young soldier. Full of passion. Full of fire. So he is pugnacious or belligerent. Pugnacious and belligerent means an aggressive man who wants to fight. See, it's, 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 his, it's his time to fight. He can't control. So he's sudden and quick in quarrel. Plunges into quarrel anytime. Plunges into fights with anyone anytime. Belligerent. Pugnacious. Quarrelsome. Sudden and quick. He's not wise. He's not patient. He just plunges into fights. Seeking the bubble reputation. And he's looking for bubble reputation. You know the meaning of reputation. Bubble here means, you know, transitory reputation. Momentary reputation. Reputation that is short-lived. Reputation that lasts only as long as a bubble. But he's looking for that. He's trying to get that reputation. Seeking bubble reputation. Looking for the transitory reputation. Trying for the transitory reputation. Striving for the momentary honor. Where? Even in the cannon's mouth. Enemies, enemies may catch him and put him in the cannon's mouth. Yet, he wants his reputation. He wants his honor. He would rather lay down his life than give up his honor. Even in the cannon's mouth. He wants his honor. He doesn't care about his life. He's ready to lay down his life, but not give up his honor. So he's seeking that bubble reputation, the transitory reputation, that momentary reputation, even when the enemy has caught him and put him in the cannon's mouth. The enemy says, Give up your honor, surrender, or we are going to blow you off. We actually put him in the cannon's mouth, yet he wants his honor. Cannon's mouth here can stand metaphorically also. Even in danger, even in the greatest peril or danger, he seeks reputation. He seeks honor rather than life. That's what it means. So this is the fourth. The fifth stage is that of a judge. Now again, everyone does not necessarily become a judge. It is just a generalization. Well, everyone does not become a judge, but when you do grow up, when you got kids and grandkids, you, you do become the head of your family. So you have the same responsibilities. You have to judge your family. You have to take care of your family. You have to take the right decisions. You have to deal with everyone on, everyone on your family. So it's a generalization. Shakespeare says, and then the, ju then the justice, in fair round belly with good cape and line, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances. So and so he plays. So it says, and then the justice. I actually break Shakespeare's lines for you. So as to explain to you, so that you can understand better and more easily. And then just in fair round belly. With good cape and lines. With eyes severe and beard of formal cut. Full of wise souls and modern instances. And so he plays his part. So here we are talking about the 
fifth stage. And um, that is of a judge in fair round belly. He's got a hot belly. With good capon lined. And here good capon refers to chicken. So, you know, after he retires from his job of a soldier, he has to be at home, he has to study, he, he just studies, he reads books, he does not exercise his body as much as he used to as a soldier. Got a round belly, got a pot belly. He's a judge after all, now he's an authority, and authorities are not seen taking much exercise, they are normally sitting in the chairs, taking decisions, got pot bellies, they're even corrupt. So he's, he's got a pot belly with good cape and lined, means there are chickens, a lot of chickens inside, means he's, he eats, drinks and is merry. Does not have to strive as much as he used to as a soldier. Does not have to strain his body as much as he used to as a soldier. Now he's just home, all comfortable. So now he's a judge with a hot belly. Capon refers to chickens. So he's eating a lot of chickens. He eats, drinks, and is merry. And this line can also refer to his corruption. Probably he's corrupt. That's why he's got. I mean, pot belly may refer to corruption. He's got a lot of chickens inside. He's exploited people or he's taken bribery and all that. As some say. With eyes severe, his eyes are severe. After all, he's a judge. Have you seen your principal? His eyes are always severe. They'll never be soft. Because if, if he becomes soft, neither you will study nor your teachers will teach you. So a person in the authority has to be strict. So the judge is strict. His eye is severe. After all, he's a judge. He, uh, you know, a judge is not supposed to show mercy or grace to a culprit. He's got to be severe. After all, he's a judge. So his eyes are severe. He's a strict man and beard of formal cut. His beard differs from that of a, that of the soldier. Soldier's beard was that uh, was like the like that of the that of a leopard. He's the formal cut. He's a judge, so he can't have wild beard. <laughs> there, you know, um, the soldier's beard is compared to the leopard because the soldier is as wild as a leopard. He's as as aggressive and pugnacious, as powerful, as boisterous as a leopard. He's got wild fervor, but the judge does not have that. It is a formal cut, normal guy, wearing suit and a beard of formal cut. Full of wise saws. Wise, you know, me, the meaning of wise and saws refers to proverbs or sayings. So he's got a lot of sayings because he's an experienced man, unlike the soldier. We saw that the soldier was not experienced. He was not wise. He was not patient. He was all the time excited. He had the fire. He had the passion, but not wisdom. But the judge or the justice has got wisdom. He's an experienced man. He's been around the world. He's seen the world. And so he's got wise proverbs to teach the young generation. And modern instances, he has not only old proverbs, proverbs probably as old as King Solomon, but also modern instances, modern examples, practical examples. So he teaches the young generation by giving them wise proverbs, wise souls, and also by giving them modern examples or practical examples from the contemporary world. And so he plays so the justice. The fifth stage is that of a judge. He's got a, fa um, you know, got a, got a pot belly. There are a lot of chickens inside. <laughs> He's a man who is all comfortable now. Does not have to strain his body like that, like a soldier. His eyes are severe because he's in the authority, so he's got to be strict. Got a beard of formal cut, unlike that of a sol, uh, uh, unlike unlike the soldier, because a soldier's beard is compared to, to to a leopard's beard, because soldier is as wild as a leopard. He has the same passion as that that the leopard has. 
and then the judge full of wise souls and saw, he gives wise proverbs, wise sayings to teach the young generation and then modern instances, modern examples also and this way he plays his part. So you've done five stages of a man's life. The remaining two stages we'll discuss in the next part. Thank you very much.